please consider leaving us your thoughts in the comment section, as well as giving this video a like, and subscribing to our channel. Also, check out the link in the description below. Click the link to enjoy a free bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode. Thanks again, for your kind support, that enables us to continue bringing you these great old classic black and white movies. Coming soon, to Hastings Mystery Theater. Up in the air, it's a 1940 mystery comedy. A none too popular radio singer, Rita Wilson is murdered while singing on the air in a radio studio. Radio page boy Frankie Ryan, and his janitor pal Jeff, try to solve the mystery. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight the corridors of mystery take us to 1941 for a Columbia movie Ellery Queen and the Perfect Crime. Tonight, a large power company is threatened by floods, but the owner reassures his stockholders that the floods do not threaten the power generating facility. But the owner is secretly selling his stock, so when floods destroy the power station, he makes money while other stockholders are wiped out. The owner is subsequently murdered and Ellery Queen must solve the murder. Ellery Queen is played by Ralph Bellamy. He was born in Chicago in 1904. He ran away from home at age 15 and joined a traveling roadshow. By age 23, he owned his own theater company and began working on the Broadway stage. By age 27, he began acting in movies. Ralph Bellamy acted on stage, screen, and television, and radio for over 65 years until his death in 1991 at age 87. His helpful and sometimes hindering secretary, Nikki Porter, is played by Margaret Lindsay. She was born in Iowa in 1910. She attended the American Academy of Dramatic Arts and then went to England to work on stage. She perfected a perfect English accent and in Hollywood used it to land roles as an English woman. She began working in movies in 1932 and continued for 52 years before retiring in 1974. She died in 1980 at age 70. Margaret Lindsay was an out-of-the-closet lesbian at a time when such things were just not talked about. She was never an in-your-face advocate for gay rights, but neither did she hide anything. She appeared in public with her partner Mary McCarty and openly showed her affection. Hollywood loved her talent, but was uneasy around her because back in the day, if you had gay friends, people might assume you too were gay. That could be a career killer back then. Let's return to 1941 and enjoy Ellery Queen and the Perfect Crime. Matthew's office. It's Mr. Harmon calling from South Valley. 
Hello. Hello, Harmon. Well, there's no damages yet. When the crest of the flood reaches here, everything may go. Is that serious? Yeah, it is. There's nothing we can do except wait and see what happens. Well, when do you expect it to reach its peak? Sometime tomorrow. I doubt if the dam could stand the pressure even if the rain stopped right now. Well, let's hope you're wrong, but keep me advised. Well, goodbye. Get me Mr. Rhodes. That'll be all. Hello. Uh, yes, Rhodes. I want you to listen carefully. I want you to sell all of my holdings in South Valley property and in addition, 200,000 shares short. Yes, I know what I'm doing. You just go ahead and put the order through. All right. All right, I'll throw in my holdings for good measure. Get my brokers. Oh, hello, Ray. Hello, John. I just talked to Harmon in South Valley. Everything's all right. We've nothing to worry about. Have a cup of coffee? No, thanks. According to the papers and the radio, we have plenty to worry about. Oh, they exaggerate conditions. He's right on the spot. He ought to know. John, I'm afraid you're too optimistic. There's no let-up in the rains, and the floods are said to be general throughout the valley. It looks very bad to me. Why don't you let me do the worrying? I wonder if you realize that I have almost every penny of my name invested in your stock. Well, what about me and my son? We're all in the same boat. Maybe you can afford to gamble, but I can't. And neither can the people who bought into your company on my recommendation. Ray, if you've lost faith in my judgment, I'll buy back your stock rather than have you dump it in the market. And that goes for your friends, too. That's what I think of South Valley Power. John, do you really mean that? I certainly do. <laughs> well, if you're that confident, I'll play along. That's good, Ray. I'm glad. It's you, Walter. I thought I heard a car. Is Dad home, or don't you know? Well, of course I do. He's in his study. How's he feeling? Why, fine. I was just saying to Togo, the little darling. I've never seen John looking better. Not since the day your dear mother died. No matter how he looked to you and Togo, I'm sure he can't be feeling so well. Why, Walter, you frightened me. Well, that's too bad, but you may as well know it. Dad's broke. Broke? Did, did you say broke? Son. I'm certainly glad to see you're not letting it get you down. <laughs> I feel rather badly about the stockholders, though. So do I, but I was especially worried about you. Well, that's nice of you, son, but there's no need to worry. After all, your old man isn't quite a fool. How do you mean? Well, when I learned that the project was almost certain to be destroyed, I disposed of our holdings. And in addition, I sold short. I don't think I quite follow you. Well, it's perfectly clear. Instead of going broke, we've made a fortune. For both of us. What about Jordan and the rest of the stockholders? Well, if I'd given anyone the tip to sell, there wouldn't have been any cleanup for us. Don't say us. I don't want any part of those profits. It's time you learned how money was made, young man. Your mother's inheritance won't last you forever. I think I'd rather starve than make it the way you do. It's no use pretending, darling. We can't afford to live here any longer. I don't mind, Dad. I had a grand girl, Mary. You sent for me, sir? Yes, Henry. It's very difficult for me to tell you this, but I have no choice. 
Henry, I'm broke. I've lost everything in the collapse of the South Valley Power Company. I'm terribly sorry. It means, of course, that I'll have to sell the house and let everybody go. I sent for you to ask you to relieve me of the embarrassment of having to explain all this to the other servants. You, you want me to give them their notice? Yes, if you will. And I want you to be sure and tell them I'll do everything I possibly can to help them get new positions. And that applies especially to you, Henry. You are going to discharge me too, sir. <laughs> I'll have to. I can't afford the luxury of your services any longer. What am I going to do, sir? It's very difficult for me to get another position at my age, sir. Yes, that never occurred to me. Well, don't worry, Henry. We'll manage to take care of each other somehow. Hello, Marion. So you finally decided to look us up again. I'm sorry, darling. I just couldn't before. <laughs> Dad's in the living room. You can make your apologies to him later for staying away. Now you sit down and tell me what you've been doing. <laughs> Dad, here's another South Valley victim. Now don't get up. I hope you haven't been avoiding this just because we're all broke. No. As a matter of fact, I didn't have the nerve to face you before. <laughs> No, I feel responsible for you having bought that stuff. Oh, well, silly, we don't feel that way about it. Of course not. You're not to blame. We're all in the same boat. No, we're not, though. That's just the point. I still have plenty of money. No, I'm glad to hear that, Walter. I, I've been trying to think of some less clumsy way of saying this, but I want you to let me make up part of what you lost. You couldn't do that, Walter. If you have any money to give away, it's your father who's entitled to it, not me. We had a little disagreement. I moved away from home a few days ago. <laughs> Forget the difference, son. And go and make your father the same offer you've just made me. He doesn't need it. He didn't lose anything. He sold out when things started to look bad. He what? He sold out. Thank you, sir. I'm John Matthews. I have an appointment with Inspector Queen. Yes, sir. I'll tell him you're here. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I just was just practicing. You, you Mr. Matthews? Yes, sir. I'm Inspector Queen. You step into my office, will you? I'll talk to you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. This is all right. Mr. Matthews, this is this is Sergeant Vealy. He's the best fly swatter, I mean fly caster in New York. Have a seat. Thank you. You, you see, we're all upset here. We're we're getting ready to go fishing. Now, what what was the nature of your trouble? The commissioner didn't didn't mention it. Well, it doesn't exactly concern the police department. As a matter of fact, I've come to see you as the father of Ellery Queen, not the police inspector. Well, I hope that Ellery didn't lie for you in any of his books, did he? Oh, no, nothing like that. Yes? Mr. Ellery is here. Well, send him in. Hello, Dad. Did you leave? Where did you see my new rod? Uh, Mr. Matthews, this is my son, Ellery. How do you do, Mr. Matthews? I do. I believe you know my son, Walter. Oh, I know him very well. How is he? Well, I don't know how he is or where he is. You see, we had a bit of a disagreement, and he seemed to take us seriously, and he packed up his things and left. Oh, don't let that worry you. He'll be back. Ellery and I have spats like that, and when we talk it over, make it up, and then we go fishing. <laughs> well, maybe you do, but ours seems to be serious. Indirectly, it involves the girl he intends to marry. Oh, uh, Marion Jordan. Yes, and she and her father have given me considerable trouble. You see, Jordan knows nothing at all about business. A year ago, he asked me to sell in some stock in my company before it was even listed on the market. I finally yielded to the persuasion of my son and let him have a block out of my own holdings. That was pretty nice of you. Yes. And as you probably know, the recent floods destroyed my business, wiped it out. It was pretty tough on Jordan, wasn't well, it? Well, Jordan's losses were nothing compared to mine. 
And now he has the audacity to accuse me of being responsible for what is obviously an act of God. That's what I call a lot of nerve. I think you're right, Sergeant. And that's not all. Due to his infatuation for the girl, Walter has sided against me and insists upon my reimbursing Jordan for his losses. Well, that's a rather unreasonable request, isn't it? Did you get the salmon eggs? Well, it's one that I have no intention of granting, despite Jordan's threats. Threats? Meaningless, but it upsets me because Walter's so completely under their influence. Well, can't you straighten him out? Well, I don't know where he is. I doubt if he'd even listen to me in his present frame of mind. Well, don't worry. We're really looking up, and then I'll be around and have a talk with him, and we'll straighten it out sure, all right. Sure, I'll be glad to. Well, that's what I was going to suggest. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for your attention. All right. I hope you have a very pleasant fishing trip. Yeah. Good day. Good day, good day. Good day. Tell me that bass are running to that long and they barking and snapping at everything. Thank you, Queen. I'm sure you'll find this set of books the most valuable and useful investment you've ever made. I hope you enjoy my books, my friend. I think you made a very good deal. Well, here's your receipt. One set of World of Knowledge for one complete set of L.O.E. Queen, even Twade. Please sign here, please. Thank you. You're welcome. Good day, sir. Goodbye. That was a terrific twain. The only way I could get rid of him. I don't know what you send people like that in to see me for anyway. Sorry, Ari. He said he was working his way through college. Yeah. Well, don't let anybody else disturb me today. Yes, sir. Oh, this is a place I just was. Haven't you finished checking those galley proofs yet? I'll get through in just a minute. Well, I haven't checked them myself yet, you know, and I promised the publishers I'd get them back there today. That'll be dandy. Don't forget to ask him for a check. We could do some money around here. Money? That's all you ever think about, money. Not a bad thought. Try it sometime. This is still where you just was. I beg your pardon? I have an appointment to see Mr. Queen? Uh, sorry, he's not in. I'll wait then. He won't be in at all today. But uh, he asked me to come see him. Oh, he did, did he? About some life insurance or a magazine subscription, I suppose. No, about something personal, if it's any of your business. If you leave your name and address, I'll tell Mr. Queen you were here. Well, you seem very anxious to get rid of me. So I still think I'll wait. Too bad you didn't bring your overnight bag. You can tell your employer that Walter Matthews tried to keep his appointment with him but that his charming secretary wouldn't permit it. It'll be a pleasure, Mr. Matthew. Is it ready for you? Who are you talking to just now? Another pass. I brushed him off. Oh, I'm expecting a Mr. Matthews. As soon as he gets here, show him in. It's very important. I just got rid of. But if you hurry, you can still catch him at the elevator. I really am in Dutch. Oh, thanks for announcing me. to your publishers. Waited for a check, but it wasn't ready. That's where I've been. Well, never mind that. I need you over at the Jardin house right away. Bring me my checkbook. Take a cab and get here as fast as you can. Did you get that way writing murder mysteries? Oh! Hello? Oh, oh it's you again. Well, this time I really don't know when he'll be back. I'll wait. Take yourself at home. Thank you.
auctions, furnishings, and real estate of Mr. Raymond Jarden. Look at this gorgeous instrument. One of the finest made, cost the owner thousands of dollars. And the toll. And I want you to hear the tone. Now, uh, please recognize this marvelous opportunity to add a worth by item to your collection. Now, what am I bid? $300. $300, $300, $300, $300, $400. $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $400, $
give you an even $200,000 for the entire estate, provided the inventory checks correctly. You've acquired an excellent property, Mr. Queen. I know you'll enjoy it. And uh, may I have your check for the customary deposit of 25%, Mr. Queen? Certainly. May I have my checkbook, please? Thank you. I just wanted to warn you not to deposit the check. What do you mean? Who are you? I'm his nurse. I've been with him ever since he had his nervous breakdown. You mean he's... crazy? Yes, uh, but he's perfectly harmless. Then why did you let him disrupt the sale and drive all the customers away? Well, you have to let him play. If you try to stop him, he gets excited and throws fits. Oh, he just loves auctions and buys everything. Well, please get him back to his padded cell at once. Never mind that. Never mind that. You've had enough fun at our expense without giving us a worthless check. Are you crazy? No, but you are. Oh, I get it. Well, if you have any doubts about that check, just call my bank. Well, uh, just a moment. Is there a guy here who calls himself Ellery Queen? Uh, oh, 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 oh. I wonder where Mr. Matthews went. Well, what's Matthews doing here? Walter asked me not to tell you until we got here, but he provided the money to buy your house. Ellery, you certainly took long enough to do your shopping. Walter, you ought to be spanked. Why? What's the matter? Oh, my dear boy, had I known Mr. Queen was acting only for you, I... I never would have sold him the place. It was a wonderful gesture, Walter, but I, I, I don't see how I can accept it. Well, let's go into my office and talk it over. <laughs> Still think I'm crazy? Sit down, gentlemen. As the nominal owner, I have a suggestion to make. Why don't you and your daughter live in the house until you find another buyer? That sounds like a swell idea. Take your time and make a good deal for yourself, and then when you sell it again, you can pay me back. You sell it, Walter, if you want to. As far as I'm concerned, the house belongs to Mr. Queen. You can take immediate possession. I have already removed my personal belongings. Good luck. Oh, wait a minute. Come in. When do you move in, Mr. Queen? Hello? Yes, Mr. Matthews. Yes, I got in touch with him. As a matter of fact, he's right here with me now. Just, just a minute. Hello? Hello, Walter. I've had quite a time getting in touch with you. I'm very anxious to see you. I believe we're better off keeping out of each other's way. Oh, don't say that, Walter. I'm sure we can straighten everything out when we get together. No. I'll never be able to see things your way, Dad, so I think it's rather pointless for us to meet. Goodbye. You shouldn't have done that. I think you ought to go out and see him. Won't hurt to hear what he has to say. If you knew all the details, you wouldn't suggest that. I think you're being very stubborn, Walter. Maybe your father's willing to make some adjustments with Mr. Jordan. You don't know my father. But thanks for the advice, anyway. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.
Togo, you frighten me. What have you got there? What is it? An onion. Togo, you come here to me. Come on. Don't you know that that will make you smell just dreadfully? Come to Mama here. Let me give you a little perfume. There. Why, Tony. Why, you know you're not Who's to come up here? John can't object anymore. He's dead. It looks like he was murdered. Oh, how terrible. You'd better remember that you've been asleep since two o'clock. You didn't hear anything till I came in at five minutes of four and woke you, understand? I went to sleep at five minutes of four and woke up at two o'clock. You went to sleep at two o'clock? Yes, 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 yes. Now you'd better get dressed. The police are on the way. The police? I went to sleep at five minutes of four, and I woke up at two o'clock. Dad? Hello, oh, darling. Let me take your coat. Henry's out doing the marketing. Oh. Oh, darling, don't look so scared. This isn't mine. I never owned a gun in my life. Uh, well, that isn't my coat. It looks like Walter's. I met Walter at Queen's office. I, I must have picked up his coat by mistake. Why is Walter carrying a gun? I don't... My master is dead. We wouldn't be here if he was alive. Inspector Queen? I'm Anthony Rhodes, Mr. Matthews' attorney. Yeah. What'd you say the name was Rhodes? Anthony Rhodes. Yeah. Mm hmm. Looks like suicide to me. What makes you think so? This golf score. I'd kill myself, too, if I couldn't do better than 110. What were you doing here? Well, Matthews phoned for me. When I got here, I found him like this, with his son, Walter, lying unconscious beside him. Well, where's Walter now? He's upstairs. Will you bring him down here? Yes, sir. Well, why did Matthews send for you? Well, he wanted me to be here when he signed the new will, which eliminated his son from any share in the estate. Get that guy, Walter. Well, who benefits for this new will? Well, Miss Carlotta Emerson, Matthew's sister-in-law. He'll be right down, I think. Well, he better. Does this boy Walter know about this? Well, he, he must. Right after this first quarrel, Matthew's had me draw up the will, which he only intended to use as a threat to make Walter come home and behave. Well, why did he want to sign it today? He told me he'd talked to Walter and he was definitely through with him. Who else lives in this house besides this, 
This Chinese servant. Two maids, a monkey, and Miss Emerson. Miss Emerson? Well, where is she? I understand she's upstairs asleep. I didn't feel quite up to breaking the news to her, Inspector. Oh, I see. Did you want to see me? Oh, this is Walter Matthews, Inspector Queen. Oh, that's the boy, eh? How do you do, sir? How do you do? Sit down. Would you mind uh, bringing Miss Emerson down here right away, please? I'm afraid this will be a great shock to her, Inspector. Well, son, what do you know about this? Practically nothing. When I got here, my father was dead. I tried to telephone the police when I was knocked unconscious. Well, have you any idea who, uh, who might have struck you? No, I haven't. Hmm. I understand that you and your father were not on very friendly terms. And why did you come here today? He telephoned me pleaded with me to come and see him. As a matter of fact, he called at your son's office. Ellery spoke to him, too. Oh, really? Have Ellery confirm that, please. Yes, sir. Not on that phone. Did you, uh, did you touch your father's body, or did you, did you move anything around the room when you came in? No. Well, then how did you know he was dead? When I saw him, Lying there with a dagger in his hand, I naturally assumed that he'd killed himself. Mm -hmm. Would you, would you mind showing me just where and how you were standing when you were struck? Not at all. Was... Don't touch that phone. Mm -hmm. Someone might have been behind that drape. Any idea who owns this? I've never seen it before. R.J., what was the name of the man who went into the stock deal with your father and lost his money? Wait, it just so happens that your father called at my office and complained about Mr. Jardin threatening him. Ellery confirmed this Kent's story, all right. And oh, yes, he says he's coming right over. Really? You call the office and have them pick up Ray Jardin and bring him here right away. I want to... Give him back his pencil. Not on that phone. Oh, let me see. I went to sleep at five minutes before and woke up at two o'clock. Why didn't you say who it was when you knocked? Where's your smelling sauce? My smelling sauce. Oh, never mind. This is perfect. You're not going to eat that onion. It's for you, dear. I despise them. I haven't done this since I was in the army. Smell its lovely fragrance. What are you talking about? You're grief-stricken. I've just told you about John's death. Your eyes must be red and swollen from weeping when you go downstairs. Now smell it. Go on, take a deep one. Go on. Take a deep one. Remember, your heart is breaking. That's it. Take another one. Deep one. Oh. <laughs> like to see Inspector Queen, please. In study, please. Stab wound over the heart. Death was caused by an internal hemorrhage. There's been very little external bleeding. I'll perform the autopsy in the morning. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Well, now that Ellery's here, the rest of you can go. Oh, oh. That's the weapon, I suppose. Yeah, that dagger belongs up there beside that other one. Any chance of its being suicide? That's my deduction. None whatsoever. I came over because from what Feely said over the telephone, I gathered you suspected Walter. Well, I'm not so sure he's in the clear. Where is he? Through there, in the other room. Hello, Ellery. 
Thanks for coming over. The least I could do. It's my aunt, Miss Emerson. Mr. Rose, Mr. Queen. How do you do? Sorry about this, Miss Emerson. If I'd been a little more decent today, I'd over the phone. I don't think you'd have done this. Don't blame yourself. The police don't think it's suicide. I agree with them, Mr. Queen. If it was suicide, why were you attacked? Well, maybe somebody thought that Walter killed his father and wanted to make sure that he couldn't run away. Did you think that went up all by yourself? Or did you have legal assistance? <laughs> We didn't discuss the possibility, but maybe Carlotta's right. I'm still convinced it was suicide. Do you think my father would have sat there and waited until the murderer took the dagger off the wall? Not unless the person was someone he knew and trusted. That could include me. To be perfectly frank, my father does consider you a suspect. To be logical, I should too. Thanks. Well, hello, I didn't expect to see you again so soon. I'm sorry, Walter. Miss Emerson? Is this your pencil, Mr. Jordan? Why, yes, it is. Where did you get it? Just a minute. That's evidence. I found it in Mr. Matthews' study. Now, how do you suppose it got there? I must have left it here when I called on Matthews last week. But oh. I didn't miss it until this morning. <laughs> oh, I see. You, you don't use it much. Will you bring that houseboy in here? Yes, sir. Miss Emerson, do you recall a visit Mr. Jordan made here one day last week? You mean uh, when he was rowing with poor John about that wretched stock? That's right. Did you see or hear what transpired at that meeting? Of course, we both did. Uh, you see, Mr. Rose was waiting for John, and he and I chatted on the terrace until Mr. Jordan left and the study windows were open, so we couldn't help hearing everything that was said. Well, do you recall the exact words that Mr. Jardin used when he threatened Mr. Matthews? Threatened? Well, he didn't really threaten him, although I gathered he was displeased. He simply tried to persuade Matthews to refinance the power company, Mr. Green. Oh, Inspector. Ah. Show him the... show him the pencil, really. Did you ever see that before? When did you clean the study last? This morning. Be clean every day. Yeah, well, when you clean, do you sweep behind the drape? Be clean everywhere. You do it. Mr. Jordan, I'm holding you for the murder of Matthew. <laughs> Marion home? Yes, sir. Walter. Hello, honey. Oh, I can't begin to tell you how glad I am you're here. Where did Dad go? Um, the police are still questioning him. Well, why? He doesn't know anything about it. He only went there to see if he could help you. Is that what he told you? Well, yes, darling. Oh, but we didn't think for one minute that you were involved. You're making it tougher for me to have to tell you this. It's your dad who's involved, not me. Dad? Are you crazy? I'm sorry, darling, but the police have positive proof that he threatened my father. Well, so did a lot of other people. Well, maybe so, but they found his gold pencil near the body. I don't care what they found. I know Dad didn't have anything to do with it. I hate to have to tell you this, honey, but when I discovered the body, I, I changed things around to make it look like suicide. I lied to the police to cover up for your father. They didn't believe me. I think you lied to save yourself, not Dad. Henry. Mary. Get Mr. Matthews his hat and be sure he gets his own overcoat. It's the one with the gun in the pocket. Yes, Miss Henry. No, thanks. I'll carry it. Call me a cab, please, Henry. Yes, Miss Marion. Mr. Jardin's residence. I'll see, sir. Mr. Anthony Rhodes calling you, Miss Marion. Says you've been Mr. Matthews' attorney. Mr. Rhodes? I wonder what he wants. This is Marion Jordan. 
I'm phoning on behalf of Miss Carlotta Emerson, Miss Jordan, who wishes to express her sympathy. Yes, she feels, as I do, that the police have made a stupid blunder. Well, that's very kind of both you and Miss Emerson, Mr. Rhodes. Well, Miss Emerson feels injustice so strongly that she has requested me to act as attorney in, in defense of your father. That is, of course, if you'll accept her offer. Oh, that's very generous of Miss Emerson. I was just leaving to see my father, and I'll tell him of your kindness. Thank you, Miss Jordan. I think they'll go for us. I don't know what to do, Henry. The police have arrested my father. I know, Miss Marion. I couldn't help overhearing. I'm terribly sorry. Miss Emerson, Mr. Matthew's sister-in-law, has offered to provide us with an attorney. I'm sure your father will be cleared of suspicion before there's ever a trial. I hope you're right, Henry. I think the police will want to question you, Miss Marion. So may I suggest that you don't say anything about the gun in young Mr. Matthew's overcoat. Why not? Why should I protect him at my father's expense? It'll be safer not to mention it. You see, the danger to the master lies in the fact that regardless of who owns the pistol, it was in his possession at the time of the murder. But Mr. Matthews was stabbed. The police would then say that your father had intended shooting Mr. Matthews, but changed his mind. I guess you're right. to ever get back. Been in that morgue so long, I thought they'd put you on ice. Walter Matthews call? No, was he supposed to? If he was smart, he would have. I found out at the morgue, he knows more than he admits. Oh, you're wrong if you think Walter had anything to do with the killing of his father. I suppose, again, your intuition tells you that he isn't in any way involved. If you want to put it that way, yes. Why did he go back to his father's house today after emphatically saying he wouldn't? Maybe he changed his mind. Well, unquestionably he did, but why? Go and ask him. I think I will. Oh, say, uh, by the way, what did you discover at the morgue? Matthews didn't die of the stab wound. It wasn't deep enough to be fatal. Then what did he die we'll of? We'll find out sometime tonight. I talked Prouty into performing the autopsy right now. But well, the inspector said all that. I haven't told him yet. I want to see Walter first and give him a chance to make a clean breast of it. I don't think he found the body in the study. Matthews wasn't killed in the study. He didn't die of a stab wound. Are you sure he's dead? 48 pounds, I hope, isn't that rather poor taste? The taste of the voice I object to. Drawn out the doorbell. I'll the window. I am more harm than yard. Murachong yard, South Sea, Big See Mr. Walter. Yes, Mr. Police. Mrs. Police. Mr. Walter not at home. Well, then I'd like to see Miss Emerson. Yes, please. Miss Emerson not at home. Go to dinner with Mr. Rhodes. Try again, Elrin. We'll wait. I'll take care of this. Thanks for telling me. You got the key? I know the police didn't lock it. No. Miss Emerson locked and took key. Be friend of Mr. Walters. Better wait in bar. Would you like to have a drink? No, thanks. If you drink's a good idea, it might be a long night. Come on, Mr. Police. This is Police be bartender. You know, Nicky, there's something being held back from us. And I have a hunch what it is. Sure is. What do you have? I'll have a look around the terrace.
looking for? Evidence that Matthews wasn't killed in the house. Look at this. Look here. Looks like marks from a garden hose. How those lines were made by the rubber heels and Matthews' shoes. I examined them at the morgue and found they were badly scuffed. In a way that couldn't have come from ordinary wear and tear. I believe he was killed right here and then dragged into the study. That's the general idea. Matthew was probably sitting in this chair. When he was attacked, he jumped up and pitched into the bush. Whoever it was certainly had a lot of nerve to let him walk right up to him in broad daylight when he could have sneaked around and stabbed him in the back. Maybe the dagger was thrown, which would account for the wound not being deeper. Who's that professional knife thrower? Hello, Walter. Hello, Ray. Hello, Nicky. Hello, Walter. Lee told me you were here. I've been looking all over the garden for you. I thought you two might be walking around out there holding hands. No, we've been looking for the place where you were holding hands with your father. All right. I did lie about where I found my father's body. It was right here. And I dragged it inside. And you staged that phony suicide setup? Yes. Why did you want to protect the murderer? You ought to be able to figure that one out. Well, you didn't help Mary in any of that's what you mean. I realize that now, Ellery. Tell me exactly what you found when you came here this afternoon. Well, my... My father was lying right here, face downward. At first, I didn't realize he was dead, but I started to lift him up. Then I noticed the wound in his chest. Did you find that dagger out here? No. I took that off the wall in the study and put it in his hand. And you believe it was Jordan who knocked you out when you tried to call the police? Don't come to any conclusions, Nicky. You got a key to the study? I'd like to look it over once more. I'm sure I can find one for you. I can't thank you both enough. My dear, don't try. I'm sorry we couldn't get your father released tonight, Miss Jordan, but I'm sure we'll have him out for tomorrow. Now you go to bed to have a good night's sleep and leave everything to Mr. Rose. Thank you both again. Good night. Good, good night. night, my dear. To think what Walter has done to that poor girl. Besides what he did to dear old John. Let's hope I can get Jordan out by tomorrow. And when he's free, he may help us make Walter the only suspect. You're sure Walter is guilty, aren't you, Tony? Sure as you are. Matthews had only signed that new will, which names you as the sole beneficiary. We'd have had clear sailing without going through all this. Uh, Tony, what would happen if Walter only gets life imprisonment? Criminal is not allowed to profit from his crime. Besides, my dear, premeditated murder brings the death penalty. You, as the sole surviving relative, can't lose. <laughs> You're so wonderful, Tony. I don't know how I'd ever do without you. You couldn't. And don't ever forget it. But darling, how can you talk like that? You know I love you. Sorry, dear. I just didn't want money to fool your affection. When you get this inheritance, we'll still get married, won't we? You know how I feel about you. That's what's worrying me. Here's the new one, darling. Love suicide. To be sold him down for the night, or is this it? Put him on ice. Hey, Doc. This cat was poisoned. So what? Who was poisoned? Matthews. That's impossible. Dasso Geronide. Where did it come from? No, no. It must be a hangover from some other customer. In the future, clean out your utensils. Poison, huh? That's the explanation. And he didn't take it in a highball. I'm going to call the inspector. Why should he be home sleeping when I'm beating out my brain solving his case? I think in there that'll help us. What about this Mr. Rose? 
I always thought the person who reported the crime was the first suspect. You read that in one of my books. Well, there may be something to Nikki's idea. Of course there is. Rhodes might have hit you and then pretended to discover you when you came out of it. Well, still, I don't see what he'd gain by killing my father. Rhodes isn't the kind of man to do anything unless he saw profit in it. The Chinese servant said Rhodes took your aunt out to dinner tonight. How thick are they? He's been running after her for quite a while, but my father had tried to discourage that. Do you realize that if you were to go up for this job, Carlotta would inherit the estate? It's a very pleasant thought. Mr. Sam, I'd like to have a look at her room. See if we can turn up anything indicating collusion between herself and Rhodes. Smart idea, Elry. And I'll stay here and keep her amused in case she gets back before you're through. Miss Marion! Miss Marion, Mr. Matthews wasn't killed in his study. Do you know what that means? It means that the case the police have against your father is built on the premise that Mr. Matthews was killed in his study. Of course. After you left for the tombs, I went over to the Matthews house. Whatever made you do that? I thought of what you'd said to Mr. Walter about making it look like a suicide to save his own skin. And I wanted to see if he was up to something. I discovered him on the terrace with the son of the police inspector and a young lady. I managed to get close enough to overhear. I heard Mr. Queen make Mr. Walter admit that he found his father on the terrace and moved him inside. What did Mr. Queen do about it? Nothing that I know of. Uh, they all went inside. Well, I'm going to call the inspector. Yes, Miss Mary. Police headquarters, please. Inspector Queen's office. No, ma'am, but he's on his way here now. Well, will you tell him to be sure and wait until I get there? It's terribly important. Thank you. You'd better come with me and tell him exactly what you saw and heard. Certainly, Miss Marion. And I believe you should tell the police now about Mr. Walter's gun. Are you Miss Emerson? Yes, I am. I don't believe I know you. Well, I'm a feature writer on the Sunday Star, Miss Emerson. She'll do all right. We'll be through up here in a few minutes. My editor assigned me to interview you on the life story of the late John Matthews. Oh, for the Sunday Star. Then you must work for Mr. Brennan. Uh, y yes. Oh, has Mama's little precious been lonesome? Isn't he adorable, Mrs. Uh... Porter? Oh, yes, he's a little darling. Has uh, Mrs. Brennan got back from uh, Havana? Oh, why, uh... Yes, yes, I believe she got back yesterday. Oh, how nice. Uh, shall we go into the study? <laughs> come, Togo, come to Mama, dear. Come along, come there. My thing quite a fancy to you. You must like monkeys. <laughs> I just love them. Sit at the desk. Right over here. If you want to make notes, you'll find paper and pencil here. Thank you. That's where John was sitting when he was murdered. What do you want to know about him? Oh, almost anything you can tell me. Habits, his hobbies, his friends. Tell me the truth. What did you come to this house for? I, I explained. I... Nonsense. Bert Brennan's a bachelor. Everybody in New York except you knows. Well, that rather spoils my story, doesn't it? The monkey killed him, don't you see? Kill John Matthews, and you're trying to get him to kill me. Hillary! Hillary! My hero. Hello, Dad. Howdy, son. What's this I hear about young Matthews discovering the body on the terrace? Who told you that? I did, sir. 
I overheard everything that you and Mr. Walter said out there. Really? This boy is under arrest. You know, Ellie, I'm disappointed in you for not telling me about this. Oh, this is all so silly. It doesn't matter where the body was found, I know who killed him. That terrible ape. Why, that girl ought to be in a sanitarium. She's hysterical. You said it, sister. Well, when this little deer accidentally knocked this dagger off the wall and I picked it up, she seemed to think I was going to murder her. I'm sure you were. Will you please button your lip? I don't know why it is I can't make a move around here without this genius sticking her snoot into it. Very well. But just remember, I was the first to tell you the monkey is the solution of this case. <laughs> you wouldn't hurt anybody, would you? Ain't it cute? <laughs> <laughs> that monkey has more manners than you have. At least it knows you shouldn't be wearing your hat in the house. Jordan. I'm sorry they dismissed your theory so brusquely. Miss, uh, uh, Nikki Porter. Oh, I'm used to that. But don't worry. I'll get the last laugh. I always do. You know, it's, uh, possible she has that monkey trained to throw anything he can get his paws on. Let me show you something. my theory. Matthews was sitting in that chair, daydreaming, with his eyes closed. You didn't see the monkey as it sneaked into the room and climbed up on that shield. It took a dagger, which was fastened up there, steadied itself in one paw, and with the other paw, hurled the dagger to Matthew's chest. Matthews jumped to his feet, pulled the dagger from his chest, and staggered out into the terrace where he collapsed. You've just got to make the inspector believe your theory. It'll clear Dad and Walter. You bet I will. Uh-oh. I just remembered. Elry said he didn't die of the stab wound. It wasn't deep enough to be fatal. Well, now, don't you worry. I'll get another idea. Then why did you carry a gun? For protection, Inspector. I transferred a lot of securities to Ellery's bank this morning. That's right, Dad. He did deposit a large amount to my credit today. <gasps> Look! The monkey is dead. I was chewing on that stick a minute ago. Let me see that arrow. Be careful of it, Dad. It killed the monkey. It may be poisoned. Oh, I'm sure it is. And maybe Matthews was killed with this instead of the dagger. Crowley told me tonight he died of poisoning. That explains why that flesh wound was fatal. With the arrow dipped in poison, it wouldn't matter how weak its striking force was, the effect would be deadly. Any of you ever see this before? Let me look at it. Oh. That belongs to me. But I don't know how it got here. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. That admission saves us a lot of trouble. Why don't you arrest Elric? He owns the house now. It's his arrow. Nicky's you... right about that, Dad. I saw that thing hanging beside a Chinese bow in the trophy room. It was still there when Mr. Jordan, Elric, and I left after the auction. So why blame Mr. Jordan? Why don't you hang on me? I'd like to. Will you go on over to Mr. Jordan's house and see if the bowl and the rest of the arrows are there now? Ellen, you go along with him and show him the room. I'll go too.
They were right over here. Well, they're gone now. That cook's Mr. Jordan's goose. I'm not so sure. Let's go back. idiot Jordan confessed? Why, he hasn't done anything. Henry is out. Do you know what you're talking about? Of course I do. Henry did it because he lost all of his money in poor John's stock. Isn't it a shame? I'll say it is. Cheat you out of your inheritance. Of course, you know, we can't afford to get married now. And you... Back's returned? Well, son, you didn't go into much detail over the phone. Well, I guess Feely took Henry to the hospital. No, Inspector, I'm right here. Why didn't you take your clothes off before you jumped in that pool? I couldn't stop for that. He was going down for the third time when I reached him. <laughs> He's right about that, Dad. <laughs> Henry confessed to him out of gratitude for saving his life. He told us he used a bow and arrow to avoid the report of a gunshot. Said he took up archery when he was a boy. He was trying to get his arrow back when he saw Walter approaching the terrace, so he ran into the study to avoid discovery. Well, then it was Henry who knocked me out. Yeah, then he went outside again to pick up his arrow, but it was gone. The monkey had it. Remember? I told you that, yes, monkey. Yes, I remember, I remember. How did that pencil of mine get behind that drape? Henry dropped it there. You left it in a suit of clothes he was sending to the cleaners. He took it out, but he forgot to return it to you. John, if you'll come down to headquarters with me, I'll make your release official. Water. Take care of Mary until I get back for it. Hey, where do you think you're going on that makeup? Ellery, put him to bed. You hear that, Ellery? You gotta tuck me in. <laughs> all right, baby. <laughs> Dad and I will always be grateful. Oh, it's all right. I'm sorry I suspect you, Walter. Ah, oh, skip it. And thanks. The woman's intuition isn't so bad, is it? Come on, I'm all wet. <laughs> Hi there, old movie fans. Did you know, most old films before the 1940s are lost forever due to a variety of reasons. One of the primary reasons is that the film reels were made of nitrate, which is highly flammable and can easily catch fire. As a result, many films were destroyed in fires, such as the 1937 Archive Fire that destroyed every movie Fox Studios made before 1932. 
Another reason is that the film stock deteriorates over time, especially if not stored properly. Older film stocks actually decay into a substance similar to gunpowder. As a result, many films from the silent era have been lost forever, including more than 90% of silent films from before 1929, and according to the American Film Institute, an estimated 50% of American sound films made before 1950 are lost forever. Once sound came along, silent films were rarely rescreened, and studios had no financial incentive to keep them. The early medium of film didn't yet value its history to any great extent, and studios simply destroyed old prints to clear vault space for more recent releases. In the past, the term preservation was synonymous with duplication of film. It is important to note that the quality of the transfer can also depend on the medium to which the film is being transferred. For example, transferring a film from 35mm to VHS will result in a significant loss of quality compared to transferring the same film to a digital format. Many old movies are no longer shown on major TV networks, due to the expiration of broadcast rights, declining popularity, or quality loss due to the transfer of the film to a new medium. In conclusion, the loss of old films is a tragedy for film lovers and historians alike. So please understand why these old films look fuzzy and have unwanted noise. of the uninvited. It's coming from downstairs. It comes from everywhere and nowhere. A house of terror on the haunted cliffs of Cornwall, where the uninvited walk unseen by men. Yet a cat arches its back in fright. <coughs> Flowers are withered by the touch of an unseen malignant hand. Candles flicker and die as a ghostly chill fills the air, and the living are clutched by the icy horror of the restless dead. Stop, Pamela! Don't go near that door. The Uninvited, Dorothy McCardle's gripping novel of the supernatural, comes to the screen, starring Ray Land, Ruth Hussey, Donald Crisp, with Cornelia Otis Skinner, and introducing the exciting beauty of Gail Russell, whose first love is shadowed by the specters of the past. Stella, what is it? Are you ill, Stella? Quiet. Leave her alone. Oigon. Oigon. Stop her, Scott. She's in a trance. I saw this happen once before at a seance. I thought it was a fake. But this isn't. I know. It's dangerous. Please get out of this house now. Now lie there quietly. I'm not afraid of anything here. Then be afraid. Be afraid for heaven's sake. When you were a little child, the evils of this house reached out for you. Stella, go! Go! Please consider leaving us your thoughts in the comment section, as well as giving this video a like, and subscribing to our channel. Also, check out the link in the description below. Click the link to enjoy a free bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode. Thanks again, for your kind support, that enables us to continue bringing you these great old classic black and white movies.